What's up, guys? I just wanted to share this win from the Cubecraft community. Eric here landed a senior SRE role, and I think he just did a great job in explaining the interview process, how we went about this, and I think it's good to share it with you so that you can also learn how to do this. So Eric here, he describes last week, I accepted an offer for an SRE role after a three-round interview process, and I want to give major credit to the hands-on experience I gained through my Cubecraft home lab setup. So right off the bat, here you read that this stuff that I've been preaching on this channel for months, years now, is that this stuff works, guys. Build a home lab and do it today. You won't get it by just doing certifications. He, he shows it here in the first sentence. He says that his Cubecraft home lab setup helped him with this. So how the company found me, he applied over 100 roles and it's a, a health, a tech health organization using AI, migrating their monolithic applications to cloud services running on Kubernetes. Again, here's another trend that I, I'm harping on all the time. Learn Kubernetes, guys. Do it. You have to learn Kubernetes because this is where the, the money is. This is where everything is going. And not just for running applications. It's also for creating a... A, an API that ties everything together. Kubernetes is taking this role, mark my words. So after he submitted his resume, the, the resume, the HR coordinator reached out and the interview process kicked off from there. Drawn by their mission, technical challenge, and a chance to help drive their cloud native transformation. So this is very important that you select companies based on their mission, their values. If you want to stay there long-term, it's also very important that you that you select a company and apply for it, and then this drive, this, this, this identification with their values also comes through in the interview process. It's not just about the tech skills, it's about focusing on their mission, and if that resonates with you, then it will also resonate with them that you are um, on the same track. So let's talk about, he talks about the interview process. The rounds included a technical deep dive, focused on Kubernetes, EKS, CICD, GitOps, and AWS infrastructure as code. I was asked to walk through how I would troubleshoot broken deployments, manage multi env clusters, and secure container workflows. So, as you see, it, it's not just about harping up some facts. He's asked to walk through how he would troubleshoot deployments and manage multi-environment clusters and secure container workflows. So it's just not just about knowing facts, like what is the Kube API server and what is what is a gateway API. You actually have to understand it on a deeper level if you want to land these positions. And this is why in my courses, I go so deep into this. Like my, my deployment, um, my, the, the module on pods alone is an hour long. The module on deployments is an hour long. I go super deep into learning how to troubleshoot, how to view the logs, how to make sure that you know, understand what's going on through a rolling update, how you can observe these processes, security. That's, that's, I put so much emphasis on this because you see in these interviews, people ask about it. And you know, if you do a code cloud course, then you get the certification and you learn the basic skills, but do you actually learn how to how to view the kubectl help documentation in a matter of split section, seconds using grep. Do you learn how to edit text on the command line? All of this stuff is just so important. It's just so important. The next part is the system design and observability. He had to discuss designing a reliable cloud native platform and how I would implement monitoring and alerting, i.g. with Splunk or similar, in my case, I showcased Prometheus and Grafana as relayed by Misha Vandenberg. So again, he picked this up in my courses because I'm big on observability and how to set it up uh, because it's such an important part of being a platform engineer, DevOps engineer, SRE. Topics like container runtime behavior, GitHub action workflows, and rollback strategies came up. And all of this, again, is also, I just recently released a DevOps masterclass where we take building a Python application, containerizing it, making it from one gigabyte images to 50 megabyte images, deploying them, running CI/CD with GitHub Actions, and deploying that to Kubernetes through GitOps. I have it all covered here. And that's why, where he learned this. So 
stakeholder and team communication, the final round focused on cross-functional collaboration, documentation, and mentoring junior engineers. So again, I also talk a lot, lot about that you won't just get it by the, just the tech skills, right? You need to have soft skills. You need to learn how to present yourself in an interview, how to communicate, how to write proper emails even. You know, this kind of stuff, it's so important that you learn as a DevOps engineer that you learn how to function inside of an organization properly. It's not just about technical stuff. It's about bringing teams together, communicating with stakeholders, all of that stuff. And again, this is then, of course, what you learn in the personal branding and soft skills course that we have. So, so far, he has already pulled everything he... I, I like to see this so much. I love seeing people succeed, like Eric, because they join and then they... They take everything and apply it. And it makes me so happy to see these things work because I know they work. They worked for me. This is why, why I'm able to teach these. But when someone then takes those um, principles and applies them and land a senior SRE role, oh, this makes me so happy. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so, so glad. And I'm just so, so fortunate to be able to do this as my work, to help people succeed and to help them reach the career of their dreams. So here he talks about how my home lab helped. The, eight, the edge came from building and breaking things in my Cubecraft home lab. Here's how it showed up during the interviews. So right off the bat, you, you see here, this stuff works, guys. I spoke from real experience setting up multi-node EKS clusters on my Ubuntu OS machine. I could explain deployments, namespaces, networking, services, and storage works, not just in theory, but how I handled pod deployment failures, drifts, and rollbacks. Again, here in my uh, Kubernetes Foundations course, this is exactly what you see here. So pods, deployments, networking, storage, monitoring, it's all there. I shared how to use kubectl logs, describe a metrics dashboard to trace live issues, exactly like I'd done in the lab. So you need to, don't just do these certifications and think you're done. No, you have to build your home lab. You have to start applying this at home. I learned more in my home lab than when I was working in enterprise Kubernetes environments because that is all locked down. You can't really mess around there. In your home lab, this is the place where you can experiment, where you can break stuff. When asked about scaling, I brought up scenarios for my test workloads and HPA, horizontal pod autoscaler, and tuning experiments. You had the place to do this. And I even discussed my GitOps and CICD workflows from my lab that got a lot of nods. This was a combination of what I learned from Misha's course along with other sources I picked up along the way. So what he's referring to here then is the, the Kubernetes Home Lab course. So this one, this course goes again super deep into setting up your home lab. You don't need much, just an old laptop or a Raspberry Pi. We go deep into GitOps theory and, uh, and then we go deeper into storage, security, exposing it to the internet, managing secrets, ingress traffic, all of this. So the lessons learned. Theory is good, but being able to say, I did this in my cluster is gold. Having a place where I could experiment freely gave me the confidence to speak clearly and troubleshoot live scenarios under pressure. If you're in the Kubecraft community and still building out your lab, keep at it. It's not just for learning, it's job winning leverage. It, it is guys, Eric, Eric proves it. Being part of the Kubecraft DevOps community has been a game changing investment for me. I still have ways to go as I keep improving myself with the knowledge and practical experience. So as you see guys, what I, the stuff that I teach on social media, on YouTube, like I'm doing this because I want to help people land jobs, right? And when someone then takes it and applies it, it's just, it makes me so happy. And then here in, the, in, the, in this part of the community, we also have so many more testimonials of people who are, are doing exactly the same. So this is just a long, long list, like got a DevOps job, got a job, finally, amazing community, positive feedback ahead. So guys, if you take this seriously, if you truly want to become a platform engineer, SRE, DevOps engineer, if this is truly what you want, 
then I encourage you to just join Cubecraft, try it out for a month, see if what if it will work for you, because I'm confident that it will. 636 members already think so. So why not you? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.